Welcome to another episode of Auto Mundial, where this week we're taking a look at a new hot hatch from Audi, the latest S3. We also take a look at the Hyundai Ioniq as well as a fast SUV from Porsche and Volkswagen's headline grabbing ID3. It's no secret that the Ford GT styling pays tribute to the classic Le Mans races of the 1960s. But now, Ford has gone one step further with its endurance racing nostalgia with this, the new GT Heritage Edition. Inspired by the GT40's first ever endurance win at the 1966 24 Hours of Daytona, this special GT features a tribute to the livery of that very special car piloted by Ken Miles and Lloyd Ruby, with a bold white, red and black colour scheme. Production is expected to be extremely limited, with each car getting some special gold 20-inch forged wheels and bespoke interiors with added Alcantara and red detailing. Alongside the Heritage Edition, Ford is also launching the GT Studio Collection, which will allow buyers to personalize their new GTs with various graphics packages and customization options. Only 40 will be built, with deliveries starting in 2021. The Hyundai Ioniq has been with us for some time now, but while it hasn't been topping any sales charts, as far as cheap EVs go, we think this is among the best you can buy. And now for 2020, it's had some updates. Still available as either a full EV, series hybrid or plug-in hybrid, it's had a mild facelift to freshen it up for the new decade. Both front and rear bumpers have been tweaked and all models get some new daytime running lights and LED headlights. The cabin has also been updated with a redesigned dashboard, new heater controls, a smart new 10.25 inch infotainment system and some swanky blue ambient lighting. In keeping with the futuristic techie theme is Hyundai's Blue Link Connected Vehicle Service, which allows you to check the status of the car's battery and control the climate control system via a smartphone app, as well as remotely start and stop, lock or unlock, and issue charging schedules. Very clever stuff, and it doesn't stop there. Owners also get access for five years to Hyundai Live Services. This provides drivers with live weather, traffic and speed camera updates via the car's central screen. It can find empty parking spaces, charging stations and points of interest, meaning you spend less time Googling at the side of the road. All versions have also received some updates under the skin, but it's the electric one we're most interested in, because for now at least, it seems to occupy a pretty much unique part of the market. While there are now plenty of expensive EV SUVs and performance cars, as well as a few cheap electric hatchbacks, there are a few other compact electric saloons, especially at the Ionics low price point. Its drivetrain has been changed, now making use of the system found in its crossover cousin, the Kona EV. It gets a larger capacity battery pack upgraded from 28 to 38.3 kilowatt hour. As such, its official range has increased from 174 to 182 miles. It gets a healthy power increase too, up from 118 horsepower to 134, while its battery can be charged from empty to 80% in just under an hour, using a 100 kilowatt fast charger. So there's no doubting its eco credentials, but what's it like to drive? Well, it's actually surprisingly good fun, but not in the ways that we're used to. It's not a car that you take for a drive on a twisty road, Instead, you can find joy in eking out the car's potential. As dull as that may sound at first, you may soon find yourself challenging your right foot to be as frugal as possible. This is down to the one-pedal driving mode, 
Similar to the system found on the latest Nissan Leaf, it basically means that you can drive without using the brake pedal. Lift off the accelerator and you feel the car being actively slowed down by the regenerative braking system charging up the batteries. It's a whole new way of driving and soon becomes completely intuitive and easy to do. There's also a new driving mode called Eco Plus. This allows all of the car's charge to be diverted to extending the range, handy if you need that little bit extra to get home and don't mind doing without aircon for a bit. The Hyundai Ioniq proves that quality EVs don't have to be reserved for those with deep pockets. When Audi introduced its first small car, the 50, back in 1974, very little was changed from the Volkswagen Polo on which it was based. Now though, Cars like the A1 and this new A3 represent a more upmarket premium take on existing Volkswagen platforms. For nearly 25 years now, the Audi A3 has brought a slice of luxury into a class that predominantly consists of much more humdrum alternatives. And in 1999, the S3 was introduced, giving Audi's compact car a much needed dose of performance. And now for 2020, there's a new one. And straight away, it's off to a good start. Both the saloon version and the Sportback model, seen here, have more power than the outgoing car. With the turbocharged 2.0-litre four-cylinder engine putting out 306 brake horsepower. However, the 0-62 time remains unchanged from the old car at 4.8 seconds, and the top speed remains limited to 155. So what has changed? Well, the new car certainly looks the part with the same rhombus-patterned grille as the A3 and those high heel-shaped headlights. All models can be fitted with matrix LEDs on request, with up to 15 segments, 10 of which form vertical bars like a video game loading screen. The whole car manages to look meaner and more muscular than before, with bigger intakes and a sporty diffuser housing four Casimal exhaust pipes, marking this apart from standard A3s. Inside, it's all very hot hatch and different enough from the regular A3 to make it feel that bit more special. It has a new compact shifter, fancy sports seats with upholstery made from recycled materials and high quality aluminium and carbon inlays throughout. It also gets Audi's superb new infotainment system. Its computing power is 10 times more than its predecessor and it has an integrated Wi-Fi hotspot. It seems then that the new S3 is more of what we've come to expect from fast Audis. Well built, beautifully trimmed and much cooler to look at than the standard car. But it's not the only all-wheel drive German hot hatch on the market. This is the new Mercedes AMG A35. Like the Audi, it's a tuned up version of a mainstream hatchback with plenty of go faster bits bolted on. It too gets a turbocharged two litre motor putting out about the same power. It's a tenth quicker to 62 though, and it's a car with two distinct personalities. Most of the time, you'd be hard pressed to distinguish it from a regular A-Class. It gets the same gorgeous tech-filled cabin, albeit with a few bespoke AMG touches. It drives normally too, like any other hatch, but play around with the driving modes and the baby AMG soon turns into a bit of a monster. The acceleration feels rapid, with the sensation of speed helped by the barking exhaust note. So both cars are very similar, and the similarities continue with the gearbox and powertrain. Like the Audi, the A35 has a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, and its power is sent to all four wheels. They're both pretty even on price too, but what if you prefer your hot hatches a little more distilled? 
Well, the current hot hatch to beat is still this, the Honda Civic Type R. Sure, it may look as if it's been styled by an eight-year-old with all its big spoilers and fake carbon trim, but underneath lies a truly sorted driver's car. Unlike the German cars, the Civic uses a much more traditional hot hatch layout, with drive being sent to the front wheels only. Don't think for a second, though, that that means it loses out on performance. Far from it. It's up on power at 316 bhp, although it is almost a second slower to 62 than the Quattro Audi. It has a higher top speed of 169, though, and has lapped the Nürburgring in Germany in well under eight minutes. Better still, it's cheaper than the Mercedes and Audi. Much cheaper. Entry-level Mercedes A35s come in at over £35,000, while the Audi starts at a little under £38,000. The Honda, though, starts at just under £31,000. The Civic might not be quite as user-friendly as its German rivals, but it is more rewarding for those looking for a real driver's car. Four-wheel drive might be great for acceleration and traction, but for sheer driving thrills, it's the Honda that will be most fun. After the break, the Porsche Macan Turbo and Volkswagen's new EV. Coming up, the VW ID3, but first. While performance SUVs are becoming more and more popular, few are as convincing as this the Porsche Macan Turbo. Since its arrival in 2014, it's been lauded as an SUV for real drivers. Not, not only does it accelerate like a sports car, but unlike so many of its rivals, it actually handles like one too. Now though, there's a new one, but is it still the fast SUV to beat? There are a few Macan models to choose from, with the entry-level car, then the S, the GTS and the Turbo sitting at top of the tree. It makes use of a new turbocharged 2.9 litre V6 borrowed from the Panamera and the KNS. It's smaller than the old 3.6, but it's lighter and freer revving. It's more powerful too, with the turbo now up to 434 brake horsepower, an increase of nearly 40 horsepower. And that certainly doesn't go unnoticed, with 0 to 62 miles per hour taken care of in just 4.3 seconds thanks to its all-wheel drive grip and launch control system. It stops well too, with huge tungsten carbide coated discs as standard, designed to reduce brake dust by up to 90%. Optional carbon ceramics are also available, but this is already a pricey car and only the hardest of driving will reveal their benefits. Naturally, the exterior gets some tweaks to mark it out from the rest of the Macan range. It gets a subtly aggressive two-tier rear spoiler, some colourful brake calipers, while for the tungstens and yellow for the carbon ceramics, and some very wide alloy wheels. Inside, the classy interior is lightly lifted with the addition of a smaller 911-inspired steering wheel, Alcantara headlining, a pair of incredible 18-way adjustable sports seats, and the standard car's wonderful 10.9-inch infotainment screen with some of the crispest and brightest graphics that we've seen. One of our favourite benefits of the turbo, though, is the noise. The sports exhaust sounds great wherever the needle may be pointing in the rev gauge. At low revs around town, it's just quiet enough to not turn too many heads, but there's a satisfying low-down grumble. Push the pedal a little harder and the Macan begins to gargle from its four impressive tailpipes as you climb through the mid-range until it starts to wail like a proper V6 as you approach the limiter. But the USP of the old car was its ability to thrill on a twisty road, 
Thankfully, the new one is just as entertaining. All-wheel drive it may be, but dial up your settings and turn off the traction control and the McCann Turbo will dance around when you really push it. Unlike most other Porsches these days, it does without four-wheel steering and thanks to the unflappable air suspension and finely tuned electric power steering, it really doesn't need it. It rides well too and really can be thrown around like a Boxster. However, as good as it is, it isn't quite as sharp as this, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. One of the two prongs of Alfa's big performance car comeback, the Quadrifoglio, is the very top of the Stelvio range. Remarkably, it's even quicker than the Macan, with its 503 brake horsepower V6 sending it from 0 to 62 in a barely believable 3.8 seconds. A decade ago, that was supercar territory. That outrageous performance comes in part from the extra power and thanks to its lower 1.8 tonne curb weight. That helps it to feel lighter on its feet than the heavier Porsche. It feels a bit more focused, but is that really what you want from an SUV? The Macan Turbo is a car you could comfortably use every day. It's comfy, practical and wonderfully refined. The Alpha feels like a compromise between performance and refinement. It's stonkingly fast, but it misses out on a load of kit that's standard on the Porsche. It's a bit more expensive too, and it doesn't feel as well built or as up to date. The Alpha may be quicker, but the Porsche is the fast SUV to go for. It's fair to say that Volkswagen's contributions to the car world have been significant. With three of the best-selling cars of all time, the Golf, Beetle and Passat, and strong sales everywhere in the world. Rising from the ashes after World War II to become one of the world's most recognizable brands. So when a company like VW decides to make an all-new electric car from the ground up, everyone takes notice. And while Volkswagen has dabbled with electric vehicles before with the E-Up and E-Golf, never before has it developed a proper EV platform. This then is the car VW is pinning its electric future on, the ID3. And let's start with that name. ID will identify all future electric cars built on this platform, with numbers 1 to 10 representing the size and body style. But while it's a shame that VW isn't continuing its long history of proper names rather than numbers, the three is also said to represent the brand's third era, following on from the Beetle and the Golf. Volkswagen is clearly expecting the ID3 to sell well then, with the VW Group aiming to sell up to 3 million electric cars a year by 2025. But while the Golf and Passat have sold in their millions, thanks in part to their conservative styling and sensible image, the ID3 is a little more out there. It's about the size of a Golf, but that's where the similarities with its petrol-powered stablemate end. With no need to fill the front end with an engine, the floor-mounted batteries have allowed designers to rethink the way a car should look, much like Jaguar has done with the I-Pace. The wheelbase is longer than a Golf's, but it has short, stubby overhangs, meaning it gains no noticeable length or width. But despite its futuristic appearance, VW hasn't gone over the top. It still looks like a pretty normal car, with no crazy exterior lighting or cameras instead of wing mirrors. That's just not VW's way of doing things, as it knows that the secret to success is building cars with mass appeal. And this continues inside, where you're greeted by a masterclass in understatement. It's bang up to date and suits the car, but at the same time it looks and feels as though it could belong to just about any other car in the VW range. The clean dash is dominated by a big central infotainment screen, like pretty much any other car in 2020, and it has a digital instrument display in place of traditional dials. So while the design is modern and eye-catching both inside and out, it isn't in your face. 
Think of the styling as a halfway house between the futuristic BMW i3 and the rather plain Nissan Leaf. The ID3 really does have an identity all of its own. But the ID3 has another ace up its sleeve its range. Neither the i3 nor the Nissan Leaf will manage 200 miles on a charge, while the Volkswagen can hit up to 342, depending on which version you go for. Even the base models with the smallest batteries are capable of over 140 miles though, making this a real alternative to a conventionally powered Golf. In fact, this really could be the car that makes EVs the norm. It's available with a variety of different range of power outputs, while prices aren't expected to be much more than equivalently spec Golfs. So will this be the next VW to enter the best-selling cars list? We certainly think so. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we celebrate 125 years of Skoda.